Hello and welcome, my name is Michael Langdon. And the first step in building our SCORM program is that we really need to create a list of the words we're going to use that we want students to spell. And rather than having you come up with the list first and then plugging it into JavaScript, I thought it might be a good idea to explain to you how to create an array that you can use that will include your list. So a JavaScript array is a lot like a spreadsheet program. It's a basically a database like that we can store information in that our program can use later. And this is the JavaScript array here. Okay, this down here is just, these are just some things I want to show you what we can do with it, the array. So the first step here when you're doing an array is you have to, you have to type out the var command, which basically is an uh, abbreviation of variable. So you, so you type var, and then your variable games, and then the equal sign, and then you need brackets. So there's a bracket here, and there's a closed bracket here, and followed by a semicolon. And then within the brackets, we have curly brackets, and each curly brackets bracket group represents an item in our array. And within our item in our array, we can have these labels that allow us to have more than one piece of data in each array item. So the two things we're storing in our JavaScript array items is the word we're going to be using and the location of the sound file that's going to do that part where it says the word is probable in a sentence. It is probable that it will rain tomorrow. The word is probable. So that's the sentence. And this is the location of that. We don't need to add anything other than the name, the first part of the name, because we're going to just plug in the ending later. So as you can see here, we have an equal sign, bracket, and then our first label is word. So this would be, and then colon, and then the word. And you need to put it in quotation marks. You can use single quotes or apostrophes or full quotation marks which would be that but you have to do one or the other you can't do both now this can make a difference when you're working with data that has apostrophes and stuff in it so uh, but we're not gonna have to worry about that right now is so if we want to add an entry here this is what we're gonna do we're gonna put a comma after that curly bracket and then I'm gonna hit the enter key and then I'm gonna put in a curly bracket and you can see Dreamweaver the program I'm using automatically pulls in the closed bracket now I'm using Dreamweaver uh, there's all kinds of programs out there my favorite was notepad plus plus before using Dreamweaver so you can always use that and notepad plus 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 you can get a free copy a portable copy at portableapps.com and it will work much the same way as this uh, it's good to have a text editor that's designed for JavaScript and programming so that it has the numbers on the side here to tell you what line of code you're working on. So once we have our curly brackets in place, we type out the word word. And you can see it kind of helps me there. And then we need a colon. We need a quotation mark, and it automatically puts in double quotation marks. And then we need a word. So let's just go with kilometer. So once we have that, after the apostrophe, the second apostrophe, we put a comma, then the word sound, colon, space, apostrophe, sounds. Sounds is going to be the folder where my sounds are located. And then kilometer is the file name, but we're not putting in the three-letter extension because we can do that programmatically later. And a lot of this stuff, it's important that we do it programmatically because it, it will allow the computer to do a lot of the work that we don't have to do. So, for example, down here, here I have a variable I've created called number of questions. And then what happens is I say games.length, and what it's going to tell me is the length of this. Now, when you're working in arrays, this is what you need to know. Arrays don't start with number one. They start with zero. 
So this is the first entry in our array, and that would be indexed as zero. This would be one, two, three, and four, okay? So that's how that works. And when you add them, remember to put a comma here, enter, and then start your new line. If this is the last entry, then you don't need a comma, okay? So here we're asking basically how many items are in this. And that's important to know when you're cycling through them how many there are. And then later, and we do this because later if we want to add words, we don't have to do anything to the program special except add words. And then we can create a variable called variable of our game equals games. So that's this yet. And then in the square brackets, we have an IDX. So this is the index. So if I put, so if I, let's erase this. And if I put two, that's zero, one, two. It would be carpe diem. Okay. If I put zero, that would be probable. And one would be entrance and so on. You get the idea. So that's how we get to that. We use a variable because then we can do like a loop and we can run through all of them, or we can one, run through one particular one. So like for example, every time we went through one, we would add one to this index, and that would give us the next one. Here we have an example of getting the letters from the word. So in this case, game.word.split is splitting them where there is no space. So what it's going to do is it splits this along every law, every letter. So it breaks it up into P, R, and that's how we get those tiles that are there for you to be able to use, is we're splitting up the word that's being pumped into this. So basically that's a JavaScript array, and we only need, you only need this part, and you just want to follow the pattern of whatever letters, or I, I should say, whatever words you decide to use. And once you're done with that, remember to save it. So for me, it's just Control S, save, and it's gonna save it. No, I don't need to include the dependent files. So just remember to save it, okay? So really, this is what you're working on right here. Whoops, I'm sorry, if I do that, it collapses it is right here and just add another word and sound until you get as many as you want. I generally do 20 per spelling test, but you could do more if you wanted because it does save it when you exit. Okay, so that's a JavaScript array. Have a good day.